All right, let's talk about this kinetics lab. If you missed the first part, we talked about how kinetics is a fancy word in chemistry for the speed of a reaction. Some reactions go slow, others go fast. And there are also things that you can do to speed up or slow down a reaction. For example, if you're trying to speed up the reaction between baking soda and vinegar, you could um, heat um, either reactant or both. So heat up the baking soda or heat up the vinegar. Um, you could stir it to make it go faster. You could um, make the baking soda as fine as possible. So it has a higher surface area. So maybe you could grind it up first. Okay, so increase its surface area. Um, you could also increase the concentration of vinegar. And I don't know of one, but if there is a catalyst, you could add a catalyst. That's a chemical that speeds up a specific chemical reaction. So there's lots of different things that you can do. So in class, I did a pile of flour where I just tried to kind of take a flame to it and it didn't do anything. And then when I sprayed fine flour through the flame, what happened was increased surface area meant a faster and more explosive reaction. And um, if you have a higher surface area, that allows those reactants to come in contact um, much easier. And so that explains why it's a faster reaction. Similarly, if you have baking soda being added to cold vinegar versus hot vinegar, in the hot vinegar, the molecules move faster and collide with the baking soda faster. So that makes the reaction faster overall. But today, what we're doing in the lab is studying how concentration affects the reaction rate. And so we added a little strip of magnesium, which is silver shiny metal, to some hydrochloric acid. What happens is magnesium actually kicks out hydrogen and is with the chlorine and it makes hydrogen gas. So there is a rearrangement of atoms. This is definitely a reaction. So what we're going to do in this lab, the independent variable is the concentration. So we're going to have it either be one molar or a lot more in two molar or change it and a third trial will be three molar. So of course, you know, we can't have all three in the same one. This picture is deceiving, but we're gonna keep changing the concentration of the acid before we add the magnesium strip in, okay? So the materials are the three different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. We're gonna use 15 milliliters per experiment. The magnesium ribbon, it weighs so little so we're going to make the assumption that if you have 2.5 centimeters, that it has a mass of 0 0.044 grams. And um, that's definitely a source of error. So note that for later. And then um, we've got a beaker to do the reactions in, as well as a graduated cylinder to measure out our 15 milliliters of acid. Okay. So you're going to do this page on the uh, 6B. So I'll also be modeling that for you. And so before we start our experiment, let's get some of the general information down. Question, what are we studying in this lab? And here's the example, how does adding a catalyst to a reaction affect its rate? So our question today is, how does um, changing the concentration of a reaction affect the reaction speed.
And then hypothesis, we're going to make a prediction and have some reasoning. So for example, if a catalyst is added, then the rate will increase because the presence of a catalyst allows the reaction to proceed at a lower energy than is normally required. So for us, it's going to be if a higher concentration is used, the reaction speed will increase because um, a higher concentration means there is more solute dissolved in the solvent, um, more moles per liter. So there will be a higher chance for collisions between this reactant and the other one, increasing the overall speed. Materials, we already looked at this. One molar HCl, two molar HCl, three molar HCl, beaker to do the reactions in, magnesium, strips, um, graduated cylinder to measure it out in, and we're going to need a stopwatch on your phone or something similar. A procedure, step one is going to be measure out 15 milliliters of one molar HCl and pour into beaker. Um, cut a 2.5 centimeter strip of magnesium, that's 0 0.044 grams. Um, start stopwatch after adding magnesium to the one to the HCl. Stop stopwatch when magnesium is gone. It's not really gone, but aka fully reacted. And then record time. Repeat steps one through five with two molar HCl and three molar HCl. Okay, and so our data table is going to be one molar HCl, two molar HCl, three molar HCl, and this will be reaction time in seconds. And then we also need reaction rate, grams of magnesium used up per second. Okay, so I actually did this lab and um, that's in the other video at the top. And so what I got for the reaction times, I'm gonna put these in red just to differentiate these. 79.7 seconds, 28.9 seconds, and 14.2 seconds. And so the reaction rate for each of these is going to be 0 0.044 divided by 79.7 divided by 28.9 and 0 0.044 divided by 14.2. Okay, so I can see the reaction rate is increasing with increased concentration. It is the smallest number when it was one molar, and it, the 0 0.0031, even though it's a small number, it's much bigger than the other numbers. So sources of error in this lab, um, we are making the assumption that 2.5 centimeters um, of magnesium is equal to 0 0.044 grams, but we it's difficult to use a ruler um, to accurately um, cut 2.5 centimeters so that the mass would be um, 0 0.044 grams exactly. Um, another source of error 
um, was that sometimes the magnesium would get stuck on the edge of the beaker and not have as much contact with the HCl. So this possibly slowed down the reaction. Like if we would have used a larger beaker, um, maybe that wouldn't have happened where it kind of got stuck on the edge. So our conclusion, our claim is answering our question, how does changing the concentration of a reaction affect the speed? Um, increasing the concentration of a reactant in a chemical reaction increases the reaction speed. Um, in this lab, we saw that um, the rate with one molar HCl was 0 0.0006 grams of magnesium used up per second, while um, with two molar HCl, it was 0 0.0015 grams of magnesium used up per second, and fastest with three molar HCl and a rate of 0 0.0031 grams of magnesium used up per second. Um, the calculations are optional and the graph is optional, but let's do these because they can kind of help out with some of the understanding. So also I might, um, let's see. I was going to say the graph is so nice to have because it really helps with um, just the understanding. So I'm like contemplating during this video, should I make the graph really be optional or not? So let's um, do one molar, two molar, three molar. Is this how I want to do this? No, I want to go like this. One molar, two molar, three molar. And I'm going to have this be molarity of HCl, concentration of HCl is longer, and then this is going to be reaction rate, grams of magnesium used up per second. And what were these numbers here? Let's see, 0 0.0006. This was 0.0015 and 0.0031. Okay, so I'm going to highlight my data and I'm going to go data and oops, insert. Use the scatter plot. Oops, nice. This looks good. And then how do I get it so that there's axes? Let's see, part design, quick layout. Definitely want one where it labels the axes. Hmm, let's see, this one looks, oh, it doesn't label the left side. So our title is going to be concentration versus reaction rate. Concentration of HCl versus reaction rate with magnesium. And on the bottom we have concentration concentration of HCl. And then here we have rate of reaction, grams of magnesium used up per second. And you can see easily now as the react as the concentration goes up, so does the rate of the reaction. So that's why I am going to have this be Part of the lab report. So this 
Sorry, people, this went in a different order. I wonder if I need, can I delete this? There, make that a little bit bigger. Don't really need the equation. Nice. Okay, so this graph is not going to be optional in the real thing. I just decided. But let's look at our calculations next. These will be optional. So here's the reaction that we're using. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. And paste it here. For the first part, it says... Calculate how much product hydrogen gas you should be able to make based on the fact that you started with 0 0.044 grams of magnesium. This is a stoichiometry question. Okay, so I'm going to make myself some space here. If I've got 0 0.044 grams of magnesium, how much H2 can I make? Well, first I've got to balance this. So, oh, it already is balanced. It's got a 2 here. Okay, nice. All right, then one mole of magnesium weighs how much? It's 24.31 grams from the periodic table. And for every one mole of magnesium, you make one mole of hydrogen gas. And one mole of hydrogen gas weighs 2.016 grams. Multiply across the top. So let's see. 0 0.044 times 2.016 divided by 24.31. That, according to this, you would make 0 0.0036 moles of hydrogen gas. But let's see what is the limiting factor here. So we used 15 milliliters. So that's 0 0.015 liters, if you divide by 1,000, of each acid. So let's do one molar HCl first. Liters times molarity, 0 0.015 moles of HCl. Okay, and let's use stoichiometry here. For every two moles of HCl, we make one mole of hydrogen gas. And one mole of hydrogen gas is 2.016 grams. So it's kind of like multiplying by 1 over 1 here. So 0 0.015 times 2.016 divided by 2. So you can make much more 0.1512 moles of H2. So this is telling me that the magnesium is going to run out first because you can't make as much of it. So magnesium limits, because it's just going to get worse from here. Not worse, but you're going to be able to make more. So if you had 2 molar HCl, that's 0 0.03 moles. 2 moles HCl, 1 mole H2, 1 mole H2. 2.016 grams. You could make 0 0.03 moles of H2. And last but not least, I think I need a little more space. If you had 3 molar Point zero four five moles HCl, and then this is one mole H2, two moles HCl, one mole H2, 2.016 grams equals that's point zero four five moles of H2 about. So the magnesium limits how much hydrogen you can make. So you could add more strips of magnesium 
a lot more to the HCl and the three molar, I mean, HCl, and you could make even more hydrogen gas. Okay, but again, those calculations were optional. So, all right, nice job on the lab.